Hello everybody, this is Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com uh, here to give away some more free bass lessons. Uh, and this will be for pretty much any style. I'll, I'll be concentrating mainly on rock uh, drum beats via the lovely big Casio keyboard behind me. Today we're using the old 1980 original Gene Simmons Kramer Axe Bass. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is um, actually going from the very beginning, the very fundamentals of um, whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, um, just how to find a pocket, how to find a groove first on anything that you are just trying to create. So the best thing for you to do is have some source of a drum track and it just so happens if you grow, go over to GroovyMusicLessons.com um, I've made up uh, 60 different drum beats in 10 and 6 different styles. You can grab those for a download of only 4 bucks. So there's 60 full length, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8 minute songs um, that I actually just did up here. So uh, you can practice along with those if you would like. Or if you have a drum machine, great. If you have a keyboard like this, great. Whatever. But metronomes, they're no fun. You know, you got to have some pounding drums back there. So let's get down here and start working on what we got to work on. Okay, again, I am going to just throw some drum beats on, basic, very basic rock beats. And um, to show you the difference between, like I said, whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, the, just how they feel in a song when you're trying to create an original part or just trying to come up with a part for a song or if you're listening to a existing song so you know what they are and what to call them and so forth and then we'll learn how to embellish from there and how to actually make up bass lines, bass parts uh, see if you want to go up higher, see if you want to go down lower so in order to do such a thing I'm actually going to play in the key of C today and that will be for a lot of you your first dot but being the Kramer here it has a first dot here on the first fret so we're just going to the third fret on your A string. Now I don't care if you use a pick like this. Or if you play with your fingers. If you play like John Entwistle, like a typewriter. Or if you put a uh, slap. I don't care what you do on this hand. Everyone has their own place. They all have their own sound. Is one or the other right or wrong? No. Um, you should use them all. Each one sounds very, very different. Okay? Um, I personally am going to sit here and play with my fingers. Okay? And I'll show you how I do each one. The drum track will sound like this. Very, very basic drum track. Okay, now when we're doing whole notes, it means you actually hit that note, the C note, and like I will be counting along with the drum track like this. One and two and three and four and again. One and two and three and four and. Okay, so you're getting a one and two and three and four and. A whole note is actually when you play that C note here again on the A string or your third string, third fret, and you actually play it one and two and three and four and and you let it ring for the whole time and then you hit it again on one so you play one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and now is that useful? Sometimes. Okay, we have to know it all. Okay, so we're not going to leave anything out. So let's just do that real quick. And one, two, three, here we go. And one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. And it sounds like this. Okay, so they're just nice long notes. 
Now you can do the exact same thing instead of it being a whole note, okay, you're going to hit on the one, one and two and three and four and one and two. See how I'm killing the string by putting my fingers on there. I'm not putting them down on another fret. I'm just stopping the ringing. And I'm putting other fingers behind the one I just plucked. So I'm blocking it from two different ends. So it just sounds like this. So you only play on the one and you kill it by the and of one, meaning one and. So you hit one and two. So it's already quiet by the time you say and. So let's do that. Still doing, just playing on the one now. So we're playing the one and then resting for the rest of the whole bar or measure. That's what that's called when you're going one and two and three and four and that's a bar or a measure, whichever you want to call it. So you got you know, songs that are called 12 bar blues. You have four bars of in C, then you got four bars here, then you got two bars, two bars, two bars, add them together and different notes and it comes up to 12 bars before the pattern repeats itself. We'll come up to that later because we got to start off with the slow stuff um, or start off with the basics okay so right now we're gonna do that one and then rest on the rest of the for the rest of the bar three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and three and four and one two and three and listen one okay so it's just very Here's what's called staccato. Again, a lot of terms you're going to need to learn. So staccato is when you cut it off. The whole note is when you ring. That's a whole note. Three and four and one and two and three. Staccato. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Okay. So you can actually do half of that and let it ring for half of that. One and two and three and four and one. sound like this. And three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Okay. So it's just a matter of what you want it to sound like. Now there are plenty of instances where you will use exactly this. And then we go to half notes where you actually play it. So we divide everything in half. So you play on the one and two and three and four and so we're actually going to play on the one and the three. Okay, so we're going to do half notes where they ring one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So you hit it on the one and three, but you still let it ring. Two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and listen. going to do it staccato which means one and two and three and four and one okay going and two and three and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and three and four and one and three and let them quarter notes which means half of that so we're going to do it on every number so not the and so we'll be going one and two and three and four and you know letting them ring and then we'll do them staccato okay first time we're going to let them ring but they're not going to ring for long because we're chopping them up so you're playing on every number and leaving the ands out of there just letting it ring so you're going to play on the one through two three and four one, two, three, four. So like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three four and one and two and three and four. Listen, one. Okay, so I was trying to show you there. We can B 
be doing our fingers like we're walking in the yellow pages if you're using your fingers. A lot of people will do this, they'll just rest their thumb on the top string or rest it on a pickup or you might have a piece of wood or something there, a place to actually anchor your finger, your thumb at, but and you'll notice the closer you play to the neck, the more bass you get. The closer you play back here towards the bridge, the more treble you get and you start to lose your bass. Okay, so your tone matters a lot by where you play it. with that too. Now let's do it rusticato on the quarter notes. Again, one and two and three and four. So we're playing on the notes or on the numbers. Leaving the hands out, but very staccato. One and two and three and four and okay. Coming up two, three, four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and one. Two and three and four. Listen. to get an idea of what's going on here. Now we're going to cut those in half and do eighth notes. Okay, we're going to add more to this other than just one note here in a second. You got to crawl before you can walk. Eighth notes. You're going to be playing one and two and three and four and. So every single word that comes out of our mouth or in our mind, we're going to be playing it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now it's up to you to decide whether you want them to ring like I was just doing. Now by this point it's getting so many notes in there that it's not going to sound a whole lot different than the staccato. Where it's, but if you play back here a little bit towards the bridge and then chop each note off. It doesn't sound more like you'll notice there is a difference. So you can get more clarity and more note individualism so you can actually hear each note. Because you've got drums going on, guitars, keyboards possibly, just, you know, distortion everywhere. But um, you want to hear and feel each one of your notes. So is it going to be a big muddy wash where you turn off your tone knob and it sounds like garbage? Or put your notes in there so you can actually hear the note. And are you going to play up here? Are you going to play it back here? Are you going to do a staccato or are you going to let them ring? Let's listen to them both. Okay, I'm going to let them ring and see if you can tell the difference between ringing and staccato. I'll play them back to back. Okay, here we go. Here goes ringing first. One and two and three and four and one and two. Okay, now I'm going to go to staccato. Back to ringing. Back to staccato. Okay, what I was trying to show you there on the staccato, you can just lift up your finger and kill the note each time since you don't have time with eighth notes to put fingers down between each time you're hitting it. So you can do this. Okay? So it's there. Just lift it up. So you push down when it's time for each note and then hit it at the same time. Slow motion. Okay, so you're actually doing both at the same time. Okay, now you can go up to 16th notes if you want. 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a... Yes, that's correct. 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a... Is how you pronounce everything. And this is correct the world over. Um, you can play it with your fingers if you want. <laughs> Thank you. 
players play because you like to play that fast stuff like and actually it sounds way cooler or different you can decide if it's cool or not if you're using a pick for 16th notes you don't have to use that first finger use whatever finger you feel comfortable with until we start adding extra things okay so let's listen to it with 16th notes Two, three, four. Okay, so there I showed you a little bit of what changing it up adding some licks in. Licks are little licks where you add a bunch of extra notes in. Um, little patterns that I'm getting ready to teach you here within the next five minutes to start. Okay, so those are whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. Yes, thirty-second notes. That's playing it twice as many notes within each bar. A one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. You actually put in an extra note between each one of those. So you end up with but most of you probably have no need for that unless you're in a speed metal thing. <laughs> One drum note. 30 second note. you would have to have, in order to make it really sound really punchy, a drummer that was actually playing like a double bass pedals or double bass drums with lightning fast accuracy to make that really happen. And that would be your speed metal type stuff. Okay, so those are your options as far as straight playing. Okay, now what if you listen to the drum, bass drum, which is your job. Listen to the bass drum now. This whole time we've been avoiding the obvious. You have to listen to the bass drum, or if you want to be on the correct uh, terminology with a drummer, the kick drum, not the bass drum. You have a bass guitar, but a kick drum. Okay, it helps um, lessen the confusion as well on stage when you're talking about, okay, let me hear the bass. Sound man, you know, say, okay, let's hear the bass. That's you! So you would be... You'd play for the sound man so he could get your sound out through the sound system fine. Okay, let's hear the kick instead of the bass and being confused because he wants to hear the bass drum so everybody else is going to say kick so let's listen to the kick on this same thing we've been doing the kick drum if you, can, if you just say kick everybody knows what it is hey there it is once now we're going to change it No matter which one I'm doing there, the bass um, will follow exactly what we've been doing. You can do any of them. It's playing quarter notes. Okay, it's actually hitting on. Let's do it back to pass on. Call me a liar, and you'd be right. It's hit. It's doing the. Uh, sorry, the uh, half notes. So it's doing the one and the three, the one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So if you want to lock tight, solid in with the kick drum, you would play the one and the three, because now you're going to listen for that. So listen. So one. So it's playing on the one and three. So you are there, both of you, the bass guitarist and the kick drum, are there to complement each other and really put out some major force, you know, through the PA. Uh, that's where all the thunder comes from. So you actually have to make a point of accenting everything that the bass drum does. So you definitely want to be there with a good solid note 
on the one and the three. Then it's up to you to decide if you want to put more in there. You can put as much or as little as you want, but you have to pay attention to what else is going on in the song. So you can see if you need to be what is called busy, which means... Or if you just need to lay back and one and two and three and four and one and two and three just throw something in every now and then to do what's called break it up. So you're just not going one and two and three and four and one, which is fine. I mean, that could be dance solid for the people out on the dance floor, and it's going to be perfectly solid with the kick drum, but you're going to be bored to death, and you want the entire bottom end, um, which is you and the kick drum, to be moving somewhere sometime. So even though that it is perfectly correct to play the one and the three, because that's what the kick drum's doing. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and two. You might want some movement. So let's go ahead and start learning how to do movement. So you get to play whatever you need to, which is the one and the three. Then you decide if you want to put in some extra notes um, with that. Okay, right before we get to any licks, let's show that you can go one and two and three and four and one and two and four and okay so we did and three so at the very end one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two okay even though the bass drum isn't doing it or the kick drum I should say um, you could ask him to so that you know what you're asking for say hey on the very last part of that measure one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay, say so say on the second bar, can you put a double kick drum there on the and of the three? Okay, that means so you got and three. So one and two and three and four. The second one, one and two and three and four. So you got the and three. Okay, so you can ask him to do that. So it would actually sound like this. One, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two. Hey again. Again. Okay. So at least you get some kind of a breakup in there. So just boom, two and three and four and one and add something okay so you can ask for something like that or you can just play it and it will just be really solid on the three but you'll have an extra note on the and of three and then the kick will hit on the three so you can put whatever you want in there just don't get too noty or too busy but if you're playing in a three-piece band you know like rush or something like that triumph some of the old bands, um, bass players are going to generally have to be busier than normal um, bands. So the more people you have in the band, the less busy the bass player will be unless they give you a solo or you have an area where some more notier things are going to be useful. Okay, so let's do the very basic licks. Okay, the first one that I had actually played was just, since we're still in C, um, I'll probably stay in C for this whole video. But you can go wherever you want. Um, it's just a good place to show how to build licks lower than this because you have a string up here that's lower. So you can go... Or you can go higher. Okay, so it's a good place because you have strings up here and you have strings below it. So it's a really good key to teach you in. Because if you're down here and just open E, you have nowhere to go lower unless you have a five string. So why would I show you in E? But so you can take away up here and do it. So you can do it there or here. But there's nothing lower. <laughs> okay. So the C is just a really nice place to teach you from. Okay. 
again there's a million more lessons on here and out there for you to be choosing from so today you get a lesson in C so let's see how it turns out I know that sucked okay so the one little lick I did was going from the C on the A string so third fret then open so just open A string get my finger in frame first fret second third No matter how you're playing, if you're playing the one and three, like we were, like the drum is doing. sounding though. If you hear everything going wobble, 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 wobble with all the other instruments, then you might want to, especially piano playing down on the low end, you probably don't want to do any of this. <laughs> but if you're playing in a three-piece rock band, that helps fill it up when the solo is going on. Okay, so again, determine whether you're going to do a staccato. Three and four and one and two and three. Or this, two and three and four. One and two and three, four. Okay. Those are eighth notes, so you're playing in three and four and one and two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. So each one gets a note. Three and four and one again. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay. That's a cool one. That's a very basic one that everybody uses, but um, got to have it. Another thing from the same thing, if you can play with like your ring finger here on the C, one and two and three. Okay, that's just going. Okay, so it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So you're going on the and right before the number you're supposed to hit. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So you're just going back to the first fret, then right back to your third. So we're in C doing that. Two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay? So that's got a nice little bounce to it. You're just adding one extra little note and you can put it here and there or you can put it everywhere. Okay, I'll put it here and there, and then I'll put it everywhere. Here, here, and there. Now everywhere. I doubled it up at the end. Just like when we did that, but I'm just going. I just substituted a whole bunch of those instead of. Yeah, you know, okay. So whatever feels good to you. So we're going to come up with a whole bunch of these licks right now that you can string together or choose from. So this comes your lick library. <laughs> okay, so you just learn lots of these little tiny licks. That, that's one. Just this is another lick. Okay, now we're going to do another lick based off of this one. And we're just only going to add the first fret of your D string. Okay, that's actually an E flat note for anybody who cares at the moment. Okay, so we're going to go adding, you 
heard this before. Yeah, and a lot of songs. Okay, that's why these are famous licks. You've heard them before. And you can always use them. Two, okay. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay, so again, it's all at the end of the second bar or the second measure. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, so you're just adding, da, 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 adding the one extra note. Okay, so let's just check it out with the drums. Again, you can always rewind and catch up with this, but I want to put as much information in the time as we can. So please stop whenever you're overwhelmed. Get it down. Play with your drum machine or my drum tracks that you order from me or whatever you have laying around that will make a drum beat. Okay? So I'm going to do that one. And a one and two, three and four. One and two, four, somewhere else you can do this of course anywhere um, meaning there's other places to do the C you go up here to the eighth fret of the low E string play the same thing it's just got a new sound to it so instead of this one where you only got just that much room to go. You only got a couple frets to move. You can move it up here if you really want that sound. Listen to it, see if you like it. Two and three and four. Vibrato, staccato, or just a straight slide downwards. So you have a lot more of the neck to go instead of this. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple of licks for you. Now let's um, delve down deep. That means dive for anybody in another country who doesn't know what the American English version of that word means. Delve. This means um, dig in, also get in and work, or to go down. Don't be laughing when I say go down. I can do those lessons later. <laughs> be on a different channel though. Okay, so now we're gonna do another lick. Okay, that's deep, going down deep. Okay, so we're gonna actually start on the first fret of the low E string. Go to the third, third fret. Okay, now we're going back to the first fret of your A string, then back to your third fret. So you have. Okay, makes sense. Okay, hang on two seconds. Okay, we're back. All I had right there was a couple of uh, burglarly, burglar alarms going off. <laughs> Reason being, playing bass. And some of these are so sensitive that they set off the burglar alarms. Okay, so again. Okay, again, 
one, three, meaning fret one, fret three, whatever fingers you want to use. I like to use my pinkies because I don't have a huge spread for full length basses like this. Or I might try to reach up there with the ring finger. Okay, so we just reach down. Now I'm just going to play along with the track and just throw that in. And you can mix that up too. Um, I'm going to play with both of them. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do all three. So that one, and this one, and this. And I might go. So that's. Okay. One, three, one, three, one, three. Okay. three of them together. So now you have a bunch of different licks going together and we even have a fourth lick the that we can stick in. So I'll stick them all in. You figure out how you want to put them in and where you want to put them in. But again it always sounds really nice in the obvious spots. The end of a second bar or measure or fourth bar or measure like this. Two, three, four. change things up. Sometimes I did quarter notes, sometimes I did eighth notes. And I did sixteenth notes. Okay, we learn them, might as well use them. Okay, so it doesn't have to be so straight. You can change it up here and there. Okay, sometimes it's really cool. Again, I'm, I'm flying through this stuff to give you as much as I can. Um, there's called verses and choruses. So the chorus is the part that everybody knows, you know, of the song. The verses is when they're singing the part where most people don't know the words. <laughs> okay, so we're actually playing the verses right here. So you might be easy on the bass during the verses, but during the chorus, change it up. Now chorus. Okay, so you see what I 
what I mean? So that when it changes up and goes into the chorus, you might just get fancier and start adding some more of your licks in there. Okay, so let's get a few more licks. Okay, and then you can, of course, the song's not going to stay in C all the time. Of course, there are one chord songs. Very many, very famous one chord songs. <laughs> uh, brick House. That's a one chord song. I'll say it's our brick house. There is no other chord than A minor through the whole song. That is it. <laughs> you may not have noticed it, you may not care, but that's a good song for you to either download or go onto YouTube and find Brick House and sit there and play an A for 10 minutes while they're doing Brick House. It never changes. You don't have to worry about going to another chord. You sit there and practice all your licks. Instead of in C now, you find A. So A here. Or open, then it means a whole different thing. Or you can bring it way up here. setting off alarms out there. <laughs> Such low volume, but you know, what do you expect from the demon himself, Gene Simmons, from his very, very first production guitars, or his first production basses. Yes, they made guitar versions of these two. 25 guitars in the world of these old ones. Only 175 of these basses, even though they say out of a thousand, he just left Kramer when 200 instruments had been made. <laughs> so just left in the middle. Expected to make way more than a thousand of these, so figured he'd sign the first thousand. Never even got, he got one fifth of the way and jumped ship and went to another company. Actually, they just took off their makeup and things changed. Thought he would look a little silly playing an axe without makeup, but you're not here for that. But, cool trivia. Okay, let's get some more licks under our belt, okay? We've got all these basic things going on. And again, real quick, the distinction between, um, picks using fingers. The right hand is so important. Um, it's the one everybody leaves out. Or playing with your thumb and doing slapping. You know, I have a funk lesson or ten, as does everybody on here, so you can learn how to do that. But just look, real quick, listen to the difference between pick, fingers, and slapping and popping. Okay, we'll go with the pick. Fingers. Now slap them. bass is not meant to sound great on funk style stuff with the one humbucking pickup back here. Generally like a jazz bass is really great for something like that. Something with two pickups, one back here, way back by the bridge, one up here. So those type of basses are a lot better for jazz or popping, slapping the jazz bass. Where this one, you can, you can always EQ something to make it sound right. Put a compressor on your bass and it really sounds good. If you don't know about compressors, you're right. Just go to my channel. You're on it. Just go there and put in compressor and it will pop up. How to use a bass on a compressor. What they sound like. What to do with them. All the information is here on my channel. So don't forget to dig way down deep into the, as of now, close to 650, 700 lessons on here. Don't forget all the old ones. There are a lot of great things hidden way back there. Okay, let's get you some more licks. This one has been taught before. Why? Because it is great. Um, and it's next in line. Um, it's it's going to be the most difficult one for the day, but it is going to be okay. So that is an octave. So you're on third fret, like we always have been for the C. Then you skip a string and go all the way to the G string and up to the fifth fret. So that you 
know you got them right. So if you're doing that other thing, you can have that. Anything you can always add an octave after it, or you can play them together. Be playing one with your thumb, and then one with your finger, same time. You'll see eight string basses back in the old days. Uh, Tom Peterson and Chip Cheat Trick you use a lot of eight string, 12 string, 16, and 24 string basses where they were actually just strings that were octaves of each other. So if you had an eight string, it would actually sound like this. Everything would sound like that because every note had an octave right next to it. It's like, kind of like a 12 string guitar does. And then if you had a 12 string bass, it would be another octave above that. So you would have this note, this note, and this note all at the same time just by playing with your pick on three notes on three strings right next to each other pretty cool stuff but it's not what we're into today but at least you'll know it and you'll go out and not think they're, they're so monstrous because you just play three strings at the same time but they're so close to each other it just feels like you're playing one big string <laughs> okay so again the new lick is okay so doing the octave so five on the G string, three, so you could do it two notes as picking them, or you can do what's called a pull off, and actually just pull the string off, and when you let go of it, you actually pick it. So you pull down towards the ground and pick it with this finger. Then five on the D string, then back to three on the G. Okay. Now we have five on the D, slide it down to three. Okay, five to three. Then pull off or play it either way to one where we already have been, and then back to home plate or C. That's called phrasing. Two, three, four. Two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, so it's very, very, very important to get that phrasing correct. Okay, let's try to get this phrasing in. Okay, and one, two, three, four. parts of that. Don't take everything I give you and say, well, that's the only way it could be played. Mess around with this because this is where you become an individual and you start learning on your own. Um, you learn more from coming up with stuff on your own than you will from me showing it to you. It's by dissecting it and instead of going, you can go, okay, now we just played it 
backwards too. Half of it, half of it. Okay, so that's just playing with a pick and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So we have all these notes now that you know how to play. You can play the lick as I taught it to you, or you know that you can play these notes. In C. Okay? And it will be that way if you were in D. It's never going to change. It's always going to be the exact same, no matter what key you're playing in, that pattern is always going to look the same. You're going to have this box, then you're going to have this box. It's exactly the same, okay? So here's D. And now D, octave. Same thing. Now you just play around. boxes of four notes. That's all this entire lesson has been about. Those two little boxes of four notes. But how to play little licks with those. Okay, let's get back to C. I'll play a whole bunch of stuff together. Just to show you the possibilities. some vibrato, some everything, and just doing real staccato licks with the pick. Changing the phrasing. Okay, now when um, bass players or bassists um, go on little tangents like that, little solo things, they like to play, this here's a part of bass playing, um, on, play on the ands instead of on the ones, twos, threes, or fours. One and two and three and four. So you play on the skip beat, is what it's also called. So you play on the off beat. The one and two and three and four and five. <laughs> five, four and one, two and three. So you play on the ands. And so instead of one and two and three and four and like, like check this out. I'll play on nothing but the ands. Okay? I'll never play on the one the three, the two, the four, which lets the kick drum still do its thing, but you're not playing with it ever. But that gives you that sound. So I'll play straight on the one and the three, and then I'll skip off and play on the ends. Now here come the ends. Back on. Okay, so just keep. 
keep that in your bag of licks, bag of tricks. You're playing on just the ands. Um, it will become a thing very shortly where you won't have to ever count again. I want you to get over counting, okay? But it will help you figure everything out because you have to start somewhere. Okay, so the counting is important, or is important right now, but soon you'll get that black thing going. Sorry for the stereotype, but, you know, it is what it is. They got funk. Um, there it is. <laughs> I said it. I was born a poor black child. Okay. I was actually born half black. Uh, this half from the waist down. No, it doesn't mean that anything is anything other than I just never bathe below the waist. So it's 50 years of not taking a bath below the waist. Your skin just kind of turns black that way. Okay, so that's basically where I'm going to leave you at for this particular lesson. Again, Scott Grove, Groovy Music Lessons dot com. Again, if you want 60 full-length drum tracks, you can download them from me from GroovyMusicLessons.com. Again, they're in style of country. You have reggae. You have Spanish stuff. You have rock, metal, um, like a jazz swing stuff, but 10 different whole styles, and they have choruses and verses in. You do, you know, like 12 bars of a verse and then 12 bars of a chorus, you know, things like that, or tw 24 bars, so two verses, and then a chorus but it's set up like regular songs and every single song is set up that way so you have verses, chorus, ver you could actually record stuff and use the drums on here, they're that good okay so you can learn to play the different notes or your different phrasings or your licks differently during the choruses, you know, pick it up and all of a sudden you can get to my free walking video, walking bass <laughs> one of my biggest hit ones here man there's there's almost like 300,000 400,000 hits on the free walking video walking bass video right here I don't whether you're on my channel on YouTube or on my free bass lessons channel on my website right now check out that walking bass video I've got one for sale too which teaches different walking bass parts than the free walking bass but they're always an hour long at least and so learn how to incorporate the walking bass that I teach with this stuff and you are golden you can go out and play with any band in any club in a month if you're learning to play bass right now for the first time um, if you stick to it and put in your time to practice with some real drums or some real drum tracks instead of metronomes or songs it's good to play along with songs so you have everything else to listen to guitars and stuff and try to stay out of their way and listen to what the bass player is always doing so he's not getting in the way of everything other instruments but then the band sometimes is nice and they will let us bass players actually play and get busy noty and we can actually you know and play on the skip beats or on the ands instead of and that gives it just that cool sound that you've always dug you know so Tell the lead player and piano player to shut the heck up for a second and let you go and tell, tie your singer up and throw him or her in the back room for a second and give you one little, one break. Say, give me eight bars to play. That's all you want, that much, for the whole night, but give it to you. It's, it's a blast. So once again, Scott Grove, GroovyMusicLessons.com. Take all the free lessons you want. If you have other things that you want to request that I show you, ask. <laughs> okay? So play well, play low, play deep, count for now. And for God's sakes, please get some drum tracks. Like I said, you can download them some places for free. Uh, with me again, 60 really nice ones, $4 on the website. It just says drum tracks. Go there and PayPal me or credit card, whatever. Boom, got them. Or you can get a whole bunch of them probably free off of uh, YouTube. If you know where to look, um, I'm sure you can go through 300 pages and find a few. You know, they got to be there. So do what you got to do, but get some drum tracks. Forget that metronome stuff. And yes, you have to count for a little bit. Again, walk. Yeah, that's your. I said it backwards, so I'll stick with that. Yeah, walking is our prime directive. We have to crawl to get there. Hey, I saved it. 
Nice save. Okay, <laughs> I'm out of here before I screw everything up more. Okay, you guys be groovy. Play well, play low, play mean, play deep, and for God's sake, buy new strings every now and then so it doesn't sound like this. <laughs> if your strings sound really, really horrible, kind of like this, it's because your strings are bad. You put brand new strings on it, all of a sudden you can distinguish one note from another again. If you're slapping, sounds really, really bad. It's dead strings. You, I know they're expensive, but you have to buy them. And if you're using stainless steel, you can always boil them for about 10 or 15 minutes after the water boils. Take them off only if they're stainless steel strings. Throw them in a pot, just like spaghetti. Boil them for 10 or 15 minutes, wipe them off real good with a rag, put them back on, and they'll sound pretty much new again for, you know, another week or two. You know, so you don't have to spend another 35, 40 bucks on a set of strings. So use that little tip also. And again, check out all the free lessons. Take care. Play well.